That's the first thing. But there's other things that we care about this as well. I'm going to give you two other implications before we do this example question. Okay? So the first implication is, can you go ahead? Can you differentiate this for me? It'll only take you one line, pretty much. Just go ahead and differentiate it for me. Write down one here. Um, do you get the derivative? Are you happy? I mean, it's not a very complicated derivative, is it? Okay. Now, what does the derivative tell you? Go back to the first principles. What's the point of the derivative? What is it? It's the gradient function. Very good. Now, in the context of a projectile, right, the gradient function, you can, this is probably worth drawing now. If you had just a regular projectile, go ahead and, and draw one, right? So it starts at the origin, you know, it goes, and then it lands. Okay. Now, the gradient function at any given point is going to tell you how steep this line is, right? Now, what's another question that you get frequently asked, apart from, like, where is an object, where is a projectile? You also often get asked, for instance, at a point like this, what is it, and this is the thing that Shadow was just mentioned before, what is the angle of inclination? That changes, doesn't it, right? You've got an initial angle of projection, right? But then, as you go, you know, at a certain point you're flat, at a certain point you go, you know, downwards, all that kind of thing. So I could say, for instance, when you are at a certain point, at a given value of x, what is your angle of inclination? Okay. Now, normally you'd have to go through time, and that's really awkward. You have to find when it happens, and you have to put it into equations. It's a bit of a disaster. But here, you just need to know where you are. Right. If I asked you, for example, suppose this was at x equals three. Okay, what would you do to find out that angle of inclination? Okay, you're going to sum it in here, right? So you're going to get some value out of this after you substitute all of that, okay? And then you will get dy on dx equals something. Now, that's not the angle of inclination. What would you do with that? It's, it's a number, and you're going to have to, you're going to, have to use your calculator for something, right? What are you going to do? You're going to have to use, for angles of inclination, you're going to have to use tan, right? You're going to say m equals tan theta. That's really messy theta. There you go. Right? And you just found m by putting x equals whatever you want into this number. Does that make sense? So this is an alternative way of finding out an angle of inclination. You just have to differentiate once. And it's a very easy derivative. Okay? Now, the next thing, which takes a bit of work, but I promise it's the last bit of theory we're going to do today, is this question I keep on posing to you, which is, this is the value, which is where do you land? Like, 90% of projectile motion questions will say, where do you land? Okay, it's such a frequent thing to ask, okay? In other words, what is the impact point? So I want you to have a think for a minute. I think you have everything on the board that you need. What would you do with the equation of path? How could you use it to work out what your impact point is? I'm going to give you some time. I think it'll take you about... Three or four minutes, I think, once you work out how you're going to do it to actually do it. And I want you to go ahead and see if you can find out what the impact point is. If you're not sure, you're like, I don't, I don't even know where to start, you can call me over, but spend a minute, have a think about it. You've got this beautiful long equation, which has taken time completely out of the equation, right, literally. And now you can use that to find this, but how would you do it? I'll give you some time to get a start on me, and eventually I will do it on the board, but. You have it. Can I show you? I think most of you are pretty much on the right spot, on the right track, even if you're not finished. So, there we go. Now, it's it's comically large, that's okay. Well, I'll, I'll zoom out in a second, I just want to avoid spoilers. So, what have I started to do? Well, we have noticed that this is a quadratic equation, right? So, therefore, I can use the quadratic formula. Why do you think I went to do that? Because I don't always use the quadratic formula when I'm trying to solve the quadratic equation. What's my other sort of more efficient way, I would usually factorize if I can. Do you think I'm going to factorize with all these things? No, thank you, right? So here's where I launch into the quadratic formula. I want to point out a couple of things here, right? The quadratic formula begins minus b 
plus or minus, the square root of. Now just have a look at what ensues. You've got b squared minus, what comes after that in the discriminant? 4ac. 4ac, but look carefully, I'm going to zoom back. Look carefully at what your um, equation is, right? Here's your a, here's your b, what's c? It's zero. So that's why in the discriminant, let me zoom back out. There we go. You get c being zero, so that's why this 4ac part just vanishes, which is much to our relief because a was gross, right? Now you can't get away from a here. There's my 2a on the denominator. But mercifully, things actually do pan out, even though it looks terrible to begin with, right? You can see up the top here, this square root of 10 squared is going to be the absolute value of 10 alpha. You can start talking about the the values that alpha can take, and therefore the values that tan alpha can take, but in the end it doesn't matter, because you're doing plus minus anyway, so you take both cases. Does that make sense? Because it's in the quadratic formula. You can see my twos have cancelled down the bottom, and then when you have a look at this, you're like, wait a second, I have two answers. Well, of course I have two answers, because there are two places that this is going to solve for, right? This is going to solve for the origin, and also for the point of impact. Okay, so those are going to be my two solutions. So you can see if I scroll down just a teeny bit, you can see here are my two solutions for my plus and minus case. You can see that guy over there is just going to end up trivial, because what happens to the numerator? It just cancels itself out, so you've got zero, and then over here you get this. Now this still doesn't look very pretty, but because I've got all these trig ratios in here, fractions on fractions, I can still work on it further. Yeah. So you can see that what this is, this is the projecting point, this is where I started, x equals zero. And once I simplify this, this will be the point of impact. This is what I'm after, right? So you can see if you get that sec squared up on the top, it's really a cos squared on the top. Tan alpha times cos squared alpha. One of the cosines will cancel, leaving you with just a sign, right? But this is something you also recognize, right? This is a trig identity that you learned very, very early on, right? That's just sine 2 alpha. Okay? Now, I just want to point out what this means, right? What's the point of this? Can you see that? The point of this is, I now can find out where the projectile impacts the ground in terms of what? What are, what are the three things I need to put into here? Have a look. I need initial angle, yep, projection angle. I need the initial speed, right? How, how fast you fire. And I need to know gravity, okay? Now each of these things are constants which you get given right at the beginning. Now how else would you find the impact point if you weren't using the equation of path. Well, I've written it over here, right? What you have to do is you have to go all the way through from, from velocity and angle and gravity. You've got to go through all six of those equations. You have to find out what all they are, what all of them are. Then you have to solve when y equals zero. What does that mean, y equals zero? It means you've, it's the exit that you come back to the ground, right? You've got to solve that, but then what does that give you? It gives you a Time, because you have time equations, six of them, right? Then what do you do with that time? Because you're looking for an impact point. You substitute it into x, and then, then the sun sets and then the exam's over, right? So you can do that. Sometimes you have no choice. Sometimes you're required to do that through several parts. But if you can, if all you ask for is the impact point, and you're given initial velocity, initial angle, then you're there. Just, it's a really simple equation. It's a very elegant way to do it, okay? So, after all of that work, going through those six equations, you can actually take all those six equations out of the running if you actually go ahead and use this result. Okay. And don't forget, like I mentioned, you do have to often prove it, that's often part of the question. So, does this make sense? Can we just back up for a second? What is this all about? The equation of path, all of this, I'll zoom out so you can see a more proof. There we go. There we go. Um, there's the equation of path right there. We care about it because when you're asking questions of where things are happening and you don't care when, then you don't need to worry about time, and in fact it's much more efficient if you don't worry about time. And after you prove things like this, it gets you to like, simple results like the derivative gives you the angle of inclination, and uh, solving the quadratic gives you the impact point because it's a problem after all. Okay.